What can you tell me, though, about um, uh, going forward after, after Harvey sectioned those slides, then what happens? He wanted to find the smartest people, anatomists, neuropathologists. He was trying to assemble a team. You know, he was a well-trained guy, and he had more than a, he had a fair to middling amount of neuropathology expertise, but he wasn't a professional neuropathologist. There's probably a handful of those guys in the 50s, and he was seeking them out. And between seeking them out, he was also trying to dodge the government in the sense, and you say, what do you mean the government? Well, the government was represented by a guy named Webb Haymaker, who basically was a um, a very well-known neuropathologist. Uh, it wasn't the NIH in those days, but the, the research brand, branch of the government, he ran it. And Webb Haymaker was a very imperious guy. He was the guy who uh, did the autopsy on Mussolini. Um, and he invites Harvey down to meet a group of neuropathologists, neuroanatomists in Washington within a week uh, a couple of weeks of, of the death of Einstein. And he really puts the full court press on Harvey saying, I want the brain. And Harvey's going, no, I'm keeping the brain. I got my own ideas. And Haymaker was not happy with that, but he had to settle for it. But Harvey now has a problem. Well, I still relinquish, I still, I don't relinquish. I have control of the brain. What do I do with it? And so he would find pieces of the not so much pieces of the brain. He would take the slide sets because he, at this point, had made 12 sets of microscopic slides, duplicate sets, 200 slides per set, and he started sending them out to various well-known neuropathologists and neuroanatomists, and he got nowhere. I mean, the guys at Chicago, uh, Von Bonin uh, and Bailey, they go, we don't do this. We're not doing this because it was considered a scientific dead end. You know, you're more interested in is what, well, what is the histology of a brain tumor? What happens to your brain tissue if you've had a stroke? To look at a one-off case of a genius, that's not in the standard toolkit of a neuropathologist. So he was met with resounding mm, indifference. And what's the upshot of this? The first paper on Einstein's brain doesn't come out till Marion Diamond in 1985. 30 years went by with Harvey in his way trying to distribute these, these, these pieces of tissue without having it relinquishing control, trying to avoid the, the, the kind of crazy guys who must have been coming out of the woodwork, you know, um, trying to find out who was legit, and it took him 30 years to get the first. That was Dr. Diamond from Berkeley? Yeah, Marion Diamond. And he sends, she actually inquired of him, and he sends her a little thumb, you know, thimblefuls of tissue uh, and... She does the cell count, which is the way he's thinking is, is okay, if anything to be found about Einstein's genius, it's got to be something microscopic. And she says, well, you know, there's a higher ratio of glial cells, support cells for the brain, to the, the brain cells, the neuronal cells, glia to neurons, higher ratio. And it got a lot of play in 1985. In 85. 85. And so that satisfied Harvey that, well, I got the answer now. Well, it got Otto Nathan off his back because the, <laughs> the executor's going, when are you going to publish something? So, yes, I'm sure there was an, a lot of gratification. Harvey was always, the, you, 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 you know, um, the bridesmaid, never the bride. He would bring the tissue to, to, the, to the guys who would do the study. But, you know, as the academic game is played, they would give him credit for, for they make up a part part author. How much he actually wrote on these papers, uh, I have no idea. I know having met the guy, he was intensely interested all of his life in, in what the brain showed, but that doesn't necessarily mean he could translate it into the kind of scientific findings that are publishable. Yeah. And that was a problem his entire life. I understand that exactly what the Einstein family didn't want to happen was happening now, sensationalism. The, somebody was going to buy pieces of it oh, or yeah. to, to send money for it and all kinds of crazy stuff. No, about he it. was, well, the, you know, if, uh, the, the cautionary tale, though, of course, is, is that in the autopsy suite, you know, Einstein is, uh, Harvey is, as the story goes, Harvey has done the autopsy. The media, the New York Times is on the front veranda of the old Princeton Hospital. He's draining an interview outdoors there. And when he comes back, Einstein's eyeballs have been removed. Enucleated. 
And the guy who did it was his ophthalmologist. Jacobs admits it. He says, I, I couldn't help myself. This was my patient, and he removed Einstein's eyeballs. No one knows where they are. But, you, you know, Einstein was afraid of that. The family was afraid of that, that, you know, you'd have this phenomenon of this guy was the genius of all times, and we want a piece of the true cross. Let me give me a, you know, and oh, my gosh. So the family, but Harvey kept the, kept the faith with him. I mean, there were no... Uh, interviews in the Saturday Evening Post. There were, uh, as a matter of fact, when Einstein died, Life magazine sent a photographer down, and you, if you go on the net, it never was published, you can see the day Einstein died, and there's photographs of Harvey and the Ewing Crematorium and, and, and the church, and um, probably the family said, we do not want this to be publicized, the death of our father to be publicized in Life magazine. So. You, you, they're there, they're to be seen, but they were never, you couldn't pick them up in Life magazine if, of April 55. I think Harvey respected that. Yeah. I know he did. Yeah. You know, there were, were no, uh, you know, there were no sales on eBay. There were, not that eBay existed, but um, um, no. There could have been. There could have been. There could have been, we'll never know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not suggesting. Yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. But, 